AITA for telling my mother I don't want to be around her? My mom and I decided to have breakfast together at a popular restaurant by our house, we had a good time and drove around afterwards till we had to pick up my brother from work so he can take the car and drop us off at a Costco to get groceries. On our way there we see a homeless man in a wheelchair and I hand him cash, he tried to give us cigarettes but I turned him down saying we didn't need anything in return, then my mom looks at the stranger and goes you thought she was a smoker because of her yellow teeth right? It's an insecurity of mine and I do brush my teeth for anyone wondering, he rightfully didn't know how to respond and I was in shock that she said that. She made comments like that all throughout the day but nothing made me as mad as this did. I then didn't give her much attention when she tried to talk to me and move her hand away when she tried to touch me to make it clear I wasn't happy, I didn't want to verbally say I wasn't happy because my brother was still in the car and I was too embarrassed to say anything in front of him because I know he would defend my mom with anything. We then get to the store and she was like you know I like to bully you and laugh so I just sped up and kept walking while still being close enough for her to see me. I got a call from my boyfriend a few minutes later and as we got closer to the end of the store the worse my data got, so I walked to the exit and stood by it and talked to him because he always made me feel better. A few minutes later she called me and asked where I was and I told her where and why I was there, then she said am I supposed to be here alone, and I said that I didn't know what we needed and that I didn't want anything but I would help check the stuff out carry it when she needed me to, she got mad saying that she didn't need my help and that she just wanted to know if she was going to be on her own to which I replied that I would help her but I just didn't want to be around her at the time because I didn't like what she said in the car. She immediately hung up on me and left the store, I followed her at first and then when she wasn't listening to me and ignoring me I let her go and stayed in another grocery store for the air conditioning, it was very hot out, I didn't know how to get home at first but then I remembered that I put two bus tickets in my phone case for emergencies. I kept talking to my boyfriend and told him that she is probably gonna have a long list of chores for me to do when I'm home, she always tells me to clean or do chores when she's mad, and not 10 minutes after telling him that she sends me a list. I am going to finish the list but I'm debating whether to talk to her or not, or if I'm in the right here. I think she's being childish but maybe it's just me being selfish, sensitive, or entitled. Please let me know what you think and thank you so much for reading this far, I know it's a lot. Comment. Gosh moms are just awful sometimes. NTA at all. Your mom needs a taste of her own medicine and will one day wonder why she doesn't have a relationship with you when you're an adult. I've lived this myself and now do all I can to avoid contact with my mother. NTA. You know what confirms it? She said it herself I like to bully you don't bother bringing it up, I have a feeling it will end up worse for you dude but maybe start talking to trusted friends in person or online about your home life. You're extremely mature for addressing your emotions, walking away and then attempting to express yourself calmly, something she needs to learn. Also coming for your child's appearance is so strange, you share the same genes aka lookalike and if it's your lack of hygiene or care, that's kinda on the parents at a certain point yano? Yeah, Emo parents are grown enough and been on this earth long enough to know right from wrong, I can't stand this behavior, they play dumb. NTA. You're entitled to want time away from another person, regardless of anything, but especially if you're feeling hurt and need some space. With time you can get better at communicating with people around taking that space and setting boundaries. But your mom also sounds pretty awful from what you've said here. I don't want to armchair diagnose but there may be some emotional abuse or narcissism involved, and I'm sorry you're having to deal with this. That gives you a pass for anything you might have done that might have seemed disrespectful to her. That's not something a parent should ever do to a child. By moving away from her, you actually did the much more mature thing. Then she threw a tantrum, most likely because she knows what she did was wrong, but hates that it was you that called her out on her. Next story 2. AITA for getting my neighbors kicked out. About a year ago I purchased a ground floor flat and unfortunately the noise from upstairs is horrendous. I'm used to city living and have lived in flats with people above me for many years but haven't quite experienced noise like this. Context when I viewed the flat there was a couple living in the two bed flat above. I did ask about noise and the previous owners said there had been no issues. By the time I moved in, the couple had moved out and a mother and her three teenagers replaced them. The noise seriously affects my sleep to the point where I need to wear earplugs every night and sometimes even that isn't enough to drown them out. I don't have guests over because I know they will not have a decent night's sleep. I can hear them slamming doors and drawers, running up and down the hallway, jumping on their beds, arguing with each other, TV on blast to the point where I know what they are watching, 
the mother having loud FaceTime conversations while she is seemingly on the other side of the room to her phone? This sounds crazy but I even hear them doing their washing up. They are so heavy handed it's bizarre. You should hear them when it's bedtime or the school run, it's like elephants trampolining. I've knocked on their door several times to explain the noise is disruptive. They are apologetic but a big part of the problem is the mother doesn't acknowledge she's also part of the problem, she blames it on her kids and says I try to tell them to keep it down but at the end of the day they are teenagers so of course they are going to make noise. She's now stopped answering her door to me. This summer over the holidays I reached breaking point, the teenagers being home constantly just meant I never got any respite and I work from home so it disrupted my work too. I decided to contact her landlord and offer to financially contribute to soundproofing on their end, soundproofing ceilings is expensive and has minimal impact, better to soundproof floors. I also asked him to have a word about the noise as coming from him they might actually listen. Well, while making my point I said it's not easy living under a family of four. He seemed surprised at this as said there is only two people on the tenancy. Turns out in his lease there's a maximum number of tenants which they are in breach of. It sounds like they could now be getting kicked out. I feel terrible about this, not for the woman but her kids who are in school locally. I have to admit, a small part of me is glad I don't have to deal with them anymore. Comment. She's broken the terms of the contract, in fact, she has double the number of people, and isn't being considerate of neighbors and clearly doesn't have sufficient carpeting and makes noise herself. She is the one who's supposed to feel bad, not you. It is all 100% on her entering a contract with her fingers crossed and expecting everyone else to look away. Yup. Common sense should have told her if she was going to violate the terms of her lease then she needed to make sure not to rock the boat. Way to bring attention to yourself, lady. NTA but oof that does suck for them. They had the opportunity to keep it civil though, and they didn't. If I were their landlord, I'd prob be glad to know as well since it doesn't sound like they're necessarily treating the space with care either. It turned out crappy for them but maybe they'll learn to be better neighbors next time. You didn't get them kicked out, they did by breaking the rules as to how many people are supposed to be in the APT. Had they been quiet and respectful, and didn't bother you, the landlord may have never known. But their actions caused them to find out. My complex allows two adults in a 1BR. My downstairs neighbors have three, two women, married, and I think, the adult son of one of them. But they are quiet. I never hear any noise from them, so I don't say anything. But if they were loud, and bothersome all the time, you can bet I would have complained to management. You offered a more than generous compromise to help reduce the unreasonable noise level from the upstairs tenants. You had no way of knowing that they were breaking the rules slash terms of their lease. Reality is, knowing that they were breaking the rules, they should have been proactive in being model tenants so that the landlord did not find out. Nor is the landlord at fault whether it is his own rule or having more than two occupants breaks some type of code the tenants signed on for the lease with that condition. So, again, back to the tenants who broke the rules and were bad neighbors. This has been an ongoing issue for you, and you went a lot longer than I think most people would before you finally talked to the landlord. On top of that, you offered to financially contribute to a solution to fix the problem. She's the bad neighbor who also happens to be in breach of contract. Whatever happens to her is not your fault. You didn't do it maliciously but please ignore the weirdo simply stating it's karma for her breaking the rules, humanity seems to be optional within the subreddit. Feeling guilty is normal in such a situation, there are children involved regardless if they're tyrants or not and for her to break the tenancy rules, there's clearly a reason for it. How long did they think they were going to get away with having four people when they had a two-person lease? Not to mention the sheer racket they were making was bound to draw attention they didn't want while already breaking the lease restrictions. I mean, if you're already on thin ice, don't you lay low and try not to draw more eyes on yourself? A long time ago, a neighbor on my street had two dogs who who constantly jumped the fence and came after me and my dog. They weren't vicious. But the my dog was not a fan of this style of ambush play which caused some scuffles which the neighbors never helped break up. I spoke to them several times. It was always waiting on the landlord's approval for fixes which ranged from a fence extension to electric shock devices at the top. I bit my tongue on a suggestion to maybe watch their dogs. One day I snapped. The ass hats knocked me down and messed up my knee. I wasn't quite too kind when I knocked on the door. Their response maybe you could walk at a different time sent me over the edge. 
M.T. Vesuvius had nothing on the eruption of rage directed at them and their dumbass suggestion that I modify my behavior to make up for their piss-poor adulting skills. The next morning I set out to contact their landlord to explain the risk he was facing if these dogs caused serious injury. This was pre-internet so it took one half a day to accomplish, I didn't even get to the risk part. The landlord interrupted me and asked two dogs. It turned out that he wasn't keen on even one dog. But he did have HIS attorney modify a standard lease with specific limitations regarding pets. The tenants had broken pretty much all of them. The next day he slapped a notice to vacate due to lease violations on their door. I didn't feel even a little bit bad. There are certain boundaries that we all have to respect in order to have a peaceful environment. The list gets longer the closer you live to your neighbors.